Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. Are you looking for dividend stocks that are high quality, growing their dividend on an annual basis and trading at a discount? Well then stay tuned and watch this entire video as I discuss three dividend stocks for the month of February. As always, everything discussed in this video today is for educational and informational purposes only. So please perform your own due diligence before investing in any stock or ETF mentioned today as I am not a financial advisor. I wanted to bring something to your attention if you're not yet a subscriber. Recently, I launched my new weekly newsletter that is completely free to sign up called the Dividend Investor's Edge, where I discuss weekly stock market information from the week past and looking ahead dividend news regarding dividend increases and upgrades to stocks or downgrades to stocks. So definitely give that a look and I will put the link in the description down below. Now I know some of you have already taken advantage of the M1 finance promotion that's going on right now, but for those of you that haven't and are looking to open a new investing account, whether it's a regular brokerage account or an investment IRA account, definitely check out M1 Finance because they are giving away 50 free dollars for opening every new account. The S&P 500 has gotten off to a shaky start here in 2022, and it actually briefly entered correction territory. And in fact, the NASDAQ almost had its worst January to date. For those of you asking what a correction is, this is when an individual stock, or it could be an ETF or an index, pulls back 10% or more from its recent 52 week highs. Corrections can be scary, especially for new investors. When a market wide correction like we've seen of late has happened, it also brings down high quality stocks. And many of these you can find opportunities in companies that are still performing quite well and providing strong earnings and strong cash flow. So definitely always perform your due diligence on a list of stocks that you always want to have on your watch list for when opportunities present themselves and today i'm going to give you three dividend stocks that i believe are trading at a solid valuation now the s p 500 just briefly touched into that correction territory before bouncing back up but many of these ultra growth stock names that we've seen especially in the technology sector they're in what's called a bear market and that's when stocks are down by 20 percent or more just look at Kathy Wood's ARK stocks, the Innovation ARK ETF, A-R-K-K. They have stocks such as Roku or Teladoc or Zoom. Many of these stocks are down 30, 40, 50 plus percentage from their recent highs. That bubble was bound to pop considering the valuations were just sky high and there's no way growth can keep up with those types of valuations. But some of the pull down has given us opportunities in these dividend stocks that we're going to look at today. If you are ready to hear more about these three dividend stocks for the month of February, do me a huge favor and click that like button down below as that is huge for the growth of this channel moving forward and it keeps that algorithm happy. Okay, now that you've done that, let's get started. The first dividend stock we're going to look at today for the month of February is Broadcom Incorporated, stock ticker AVGO. Broadcom is a semiconductor stock that currently trades at a market cap of $231 billion. The company has its hand in many different areas of technology, whether it's mobile phones, data centers, broadband, software, and networking, just to name a few. These are just a few areas that Broadcom currently touches within the technology sector. And all of them are very important to society moving forward, which makes a strong case for Broadcom in the future. All of these sectors of the business come together to generate strong free cash flow, which has fueled a very strong dividend moving forward. Looking at this chart here over the past five years, you can see the growth in free cash flow from Broadcom to where they're now generating $13.3 billion in free cash flow. Over the past five years, Broadcom has been the gold standard for dividend growth. During this time span, they have increased their dividend 42% on an annual basis and have now increased the dividend for 10 consecutive years. Now, 42% dividend growth is not sustainable moving forward, but the company has their hands in so many areas of technology that are needed here in society that I believe the cash flow will just continue to rise, which will continue to fuel a growing dividend at least of double digit percentages moving forward in the near term. The current dividend yield sits at 2.9%, percent 
with a payout ratio of 53%. And as we've seen, the growing free cash flow makes this dividend a very safe one for investors. Broadcom had a very strong year in 2021 when the stock rose 53%. But looking at the chart here, you can see that in December, the company peaked. And since then, shares have fallen 15%, providing an opportunity that we did not see less than five weeks ago. Looking at various valuations, you can see that Broadcom is trading very near fair value, but the growth trajectory is very steep for the company moving forward. And looking at the analysts, which rate shares of Broadcom a strong buy, the average price target is $686. Considering the upside here with Broadcom, with free cash flow and the revenue growth we've seen, as well as earnings growth, the company provides a strong growing dividend for you to check out for your portfolio moving forward. The second dividend stock we're gonna look at today is Starbucks, stock ticker SBUX. Starbucks is a leader in the restaurant industry. Not only do millions of people visit their stores on a daily basis around the globe. Not only are they coming in for coffee now, but the company has done a very fine job at attracting the breakfast crowd over the years with various breakfast sandwich options that they have rolled out. Not only is Starbucks known for their coffee, but they've also been a technology leader in the space with the Starbucks app. CEO Kevin Johnson was the leader in developing the Starbucks app and what they call the digital flywheel, which connects on a personal basis to the members of Starbucks. CEO Kevin Johnson took the CEO reins over in 2017 when the beloved leader Howard Schultz stepped away from that position and focused more on the executive chairman role. Odds are many of you watching this video today most likely have the Starbucks app on your phone right now and you've experienced firsthand the AI and this digital flywheel where the company is able to connect with you on a personal basis based on your prior. Say you in the past five days or the past month have ordered cold brews and maybe a sausage and cheddar sandwich. Well, what they're gonna do is they're gonna throw you a bone and say, hey, if you buy the cold brew and the sausage sandwich three times in the next week, we'll give you 50 free gold stars. And who doesn't love some free gold stars from Starbucks? From the onslaught of the pandemic, Starbucks was hit in a big way. Many of them had to shut down their stores and go to drive-through locations only, but the company was still in the process of creating more drive-through options. So those companies or those locations that didn't have drive-through options were either doing standing outside to provide drink orders and food orders, or they were just shut down entirely. But the company has bounced back in a big way, and they've continued to regenerate that growth and, and get back to the international expansion plans they had prior to the pandemic. But now they are running into different roadblocks. And what I mean by this is there's certain employees or different stores around the US that are looking to unionize. As you can see in the chart here, this has led to the stock selling off 16% in the past month alone. How this progresses is certainly key to watch. On average, analysts rate the stock a buy with an average price target of $125. Turning to the dividend, you can see that the sell-off has resulted in the dividend trading near its 12-month high. The current yield sits at 2% and over the past five years, Starbucks management has increased the dividend an average of 16.7% per year. Starbucks has now raised their dividend for 11 consecutive years now and the company's most recent dividend raise was 10%. Starbucks just reported their most recent quarterly results that saw a beat on the top end and a miss on the bottom. Part of the miss was due to higher inflation costs as well as labor related costs and the stock has been selling off in the after hours so look for opportunities to add to the shares here in the near future. The third dividend stock for the month of February is Comcast Corporation, stock ticker CMCSA. Comcast is a media and entertainment conglomerate with revenue streams coming from cable, films, broadband, streaming and even theme parks. The company currently sits at a market cap of $227 billion, making it one of the largest media players in the space today. The company's largest source of income right now comes by way of their cable segment, which accounts for over 50% of total revenues by Comcast. One of the unique things about Comcast is they are unlike the legacy cable providers, which are kind of dying off with cord cutting. Comcast is moving more to streaming with Peacock, they're also providing broadband with internet and with more people working at home these days, 
due to the pandemic, but going forward, I think this will be a huge option for employees and broadband limits and internet limits will need to be sped up, which is more revenue from Comcast. Like I said, Comcast is not your old school cable company that never adapted when streaming options came out. They rolled out Peacock a few years ago, which has been doing quite well. Peacock has already amassed more than 50 million customers in its two-year lifespan, and the company has brought live TV and sports to Peacock as well. The growth potential just for Peacock alone is huge, as it's really just been rolled out here in the US. So they still have the international expansion that'll bring in more revenues, bring in more cash flows to fund a growing dividend in the future. Looking at the dividend, the company has increased their dividend for 15 consecutive years now with a five-year average annual growth rate standing at 13%. The company currently has a dividend yield of 2.2% and maintains a low payout ratio, making this a very safe dividend paying option. Analysts currently rate shares of Comcast a buy with an average price target of $58. Strong revenue from various segments of the business is going to be huge, whether it's streaming, whether it's the work from home play or theme parks, but all of this together with the expansion is going to lead to higher revenues, higher free cash flow, and hopefully higher dividends in the years ahead. I believe this is a very undervalued dividend stock right now as they trade at a forward multiple of 13.9 times and over the past five years they have traded closer to about 17 times. So definitely take a closer look at Comcast for your dividend portfolio. There you have it folks, three dividend stocks to consider for your portfolio in the month of February. All of these companies generate strong free cash flows which are very important for dividend investors to look at when determining whether a dividend is safe, but you also wanna know if a dividend is gonna to continue to rise in the near future. Let me know down in the comment section down below if you own any of these stocks right now. And if you haven't done so yet, please again hit that like button as that is huge for the growth of our channel. And if you love dividend stocks, consider subscribing so you are notified anytime we drop a new video. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. Take care.